Okay, good morning and welcome back to episode two of Chasing a Marathon PB. If you're new here, my name is Mac and at the moment we are in a 12 week training block for the Christchurch Marathon where I will attempt to run a sub 315 marathon. So far this week we've already had two runs, an hour easy on Monday and then 35 minutes with some strides on Tuesday. We have a bit of a workout this morning but first I'm going to drink this coconut water and have this Ems power cookie oat bar and then I'll take you through this morning's workout. All right, so this morning's session is a 15 to 20 minute warm up. Then we go into five minutes at about threshold just to get the legs warm. Two minute recovery. Then we go into six times 1K repeats at about a 4.30 per kilometer pace with 90 seconds jog in between. So I'm gonna be running today's session in the New Balance Super Comp Elite V4s. I recently just got these and I've only done one run in them so far, but absolutely love them. If you haven't seen my first thoughts video, you can find it up here. And I've already decided that these are going to be my race day shoes for the Christchurch Marathon. So for today's video, I mainly wanna focus on what shoes I'm gonna be using for this marathon prep and why I'm using them for certain runs and what use each of them has. the first rep, smash the gel, rep 2, I'm nice. uh, average pace uh, 4.24, I just rolled through those 6 1Ks, all under 4.30, so felt pretty, pretty reasonable, can't lie, so 15 minute cool down and then uh, that's us, uh, I got it all wrong, there was a 7th uh, <laughs> rep, so now we're doing that, no wonder it felt reasonable. So let's break down that run really quickly. A little over 15 kilometers, 5.04 average pace, one hour, 16 minutes. And so I said earlier in the video that it was six times 1K repeats. It was actually seven times 1K repeats. And the last one caught me a little bit off guard. First 1K repeat I got slightly wrong because I forgot to lap my watch. So the first 860 meters were at a 4.22 pace. Rep two, 4.24. Rep 3, 426. Rep 4, 425. Rep 5, 424. Rep 6, 424. And then the last rep, which caught me off guard, a 420, so the fastest of them all. Overall, that felt really good. I don't want to say that it was easy, but it was definitely sort of like a 4 or 5 out of 10 in terms of perceived effort. I'm actually running a bit of a tune-up half marathon on the 25th of February and the goal there is to run 136 which is about 4.33 per kilometre so about 7 or 8 seconds slower than the repeats we're running today. Very happy overall. I'm going to eat some food and then we will talk about the shoes that I'm going to be using to get me through this marathon prep. So let's break down the shoes that I'm gonna be wearing throughout this marathon prep. What works for me may not work for you. Every body is different. Everyone runs differently. Everyone's foot is different. So I would recommend you go into your local running store and get fitted for the shoe that's gonna work best for you. Now, when it comes to the shoes that I'm gonna talk about today, they all sort of have a different purpose. So we'll have what I'll classify as my easy day shoe. Then we have a shoe which is quite versatile, something that I'll use for long runs, tempo sessions, and even some sort of like interval work. And then we have our race day shoe, which is obviously for race day, uh, but we may also use it for a few workouts here and there. So let's start with the first shoe, which is the easy day shoe. Now I will just say that all of these shoes are from New Balance, and although they sent me to the New York City Marathon last year, they're not paying me to make this video. Uh, I'm just a friend of the brand and I really like their running shoes. So with all that being said, this is my easy day shoe. This is the New Balance 1080 V13. I've been running in the shoe since September last year and since then I haven't looked back. 
The V13 went through a pretty drastic redesign from the V12. I wasn't personally a huge fan of the V12, but this shoe is on another level. Now, the biggest part of the redesign for the V13 had to be the new foam that they're using in the midsole. It's much more comfier, much more responsive, overall just a better ride. Now that they've introduced the shoe, this actually has more stack height than the Fresh Foam More V4. This is a 30, 38 millimeter with a six millimeter drop. And so it'll be interesting to see what New Balance do with the Fresh Foam More V5, especially if they put this new Fresh Foam midsole into that shoe. I now have four pairs of these shoes, which I rotate every single day, depending on what run I'm doing. So yeah, if you're looking for a daily trainer to clock up some real easy miles, something that's comfortable yet responsive, not mushy, um, still gives you good support, I would definitely recommend the V13. All right, moving into a bit of a workhorse. This is the New Balance Supercomp Trainer version two. Now this is a very versatile shoe. If you just wanted to own one shoe and be done with it, I would recommend this. It can do basically anything you want it to do. But mainly what I'm using the shoe for is my tempo workouts and long runs. So it's got New Balance's Fresh Foam midsole. Uh, it has a carbon fiber plate, so it is quite firm, but obviously it's still gonna be really responsive. It also has a 40 millimeter stack height, so there's lots of foam in there which can really protect your body during those longer, harder sessions. So the biggest upgrade to this shoe from the version one is the fact that it's now 40 millimeter stack height, so it's race legal, whereas the, the version one was 42 or something like that. Uh, so not technically race legal, but this shoe is, so if you wanted to use it as your marathon shoe, most definitely could. Now, I will just say, special mention, I won't go into any of the technicalities of the shoe. This is the Supercomp Elite V3. This is the shoe that I ran New York City Marathon in. Um, I'll also probably sprinkle this shoe in for some tempo sessions uh, and some interval work purely for the fact that it's super lightweight, carbon fiber plate. Um, so will definitely give me a lot of return and I have three pairs of them, so it'd be nice to get some use out of them. All right, finally, let's move on to the, the race day shoe. Um, this is actually a brand new pair. I picked up a second pair uh, when they released last week. Uh, this is the Supercomp Elite V4. It's a pretty drastic redesign on the shoe. As you can see, New Balance have sort of rebuilt it from the ground up while trying to maintain some of the features that people really really quite liked about the version three. So the biggest thing here for the shoe is that we now have a full Piba midsole. Now Piba has sort of been like the industry standard foam for marathon race shoes over the last five or six years. And it's nice to finally see it in New Balance's flagship marathon shoe. So Piba foam is pretty well known for its responsiveness, energy return, um, but also how lightweight it is, which is why you see it through so many top tier marathon shoes. So there's some different terminologies when it comes to this foam. Uh, some people call it just Piba, which is basically the type of foam that it is. You might also hear Pbax, which is basically a brand that makes Piba foam. We also have a redesigned upper Phantom Fit for better lockdown in the heel and in the midfoot. And we have a larger cutout here with the carbon fiber plate, uh, the Energy Arc carbon fiber plate is what New Balance coins it. Um, and this is sort of supposed to work like a bit of a trampoline, sort of flex under weight and then bounce you back up through each stride. I've done a few different runs in the shoe already. Um, I've taken out for a 40 minute tempo. I also did uh, interval session, which you saw me do yesterday. And honestly, I'm super impressed with this shoe. Uh, it's definitely gonna be my marathon race day shoe so this pair here which is the brand new pair uh, i'm going to keep on ice until marathon day but the other pair that i have um like i said i'll probably sprinkle in for a few workouts i'm also running a bit of a tune-up race on the 25th of february uh so i'll wear them for that it's uh, the motorway half marathon here in christchurch and yeah honestly just super stoked that new balance have have made these upgrades to the shoe uh definitely puts them way more in line with their competitors and yeah, looking forward to running uh, th under 315 in these things come 21st of April. All right, good morning. It's Friday today, which means we have 40 minutes. Easy zone two. Tomorrow we have a pretty big session, so I'm going to take today very, very easy, get it done nice and early, and let the body have at least... 20 odd hours to recover before tomorrow's session. 
I'm going to uh, branch out today and take the GoPro on the stick rather than just the GoPro solo and see if we can get some slightly more interesting shots with it. Also, it's like a little bit drizzly and rainy today, which is like perfect running conditions. It's like 14 degrees, a little bit drizzly. My favorite, my favorite. <laughs> I said it just before, but honestly, this type of weather, where it's like a little bit cold, a little bit drizzly, <coughs> a little bit rainy, is my favorite type of weather to run. Just keeps you, keeps you honest, you know? Makes you get ready for those slightly cooler days when winter rolls around. <coughs> and it'll be much harder to get out of bed and get out on those runs. So the other thing I wanted to mention is, for this proof so far, you've mainly seen me be wearing headphones for a lot of these runs. And every now and again, I'll switch it up, go out with no headphones, find it's just like a really good way to like get into your thoughts, come up with new ideas, like within the first two or three minutes of the run, already come up with two or three video ideas. When you're out for, you know, an hour, an hour and a half at a time, it sort of makes sense to use that time wisely, listen to a podcast, listen to an audiobook, sort of take in some information. But when it comes to marathon day, I won't be wearing headphones, so getting comfortable with your own thoughts is gonna be key. Because on marathon day it's just you be you. All up, eight kilometers, five forty-four average pace. It's a pretty good way to start Friday. This morning we've got a pretty big session, so making sure to fuel up accordingly. I've got an English muffin with some peanut butter, electrolytes, and a banana. So this morning session is 90 minutes between a sort of 5, 12, and 6 minute pace. In the 90 minutes I will basically run based off feel, depending how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling good, I'll run it a little bit quicker. If I'm not feeling so good, I'll probably ease it back a little bit. And then after that, move into four times six minutes at threshold. So I've got to make sure that my effort for the 90 minutes doesn't affect my ability to be able to hit those threshold paces. And then I've got a 20 minute cool down. So overall, it should be about two hours and 20 minutes on the feet. I'm probably thinking somewhere around 25-ish kilometers. So the key this morning is just to make sure that I'm getting in sufficient fuel so we feel good out there. It's an absolute ripper of a morning to run for two and a half hours. Uh, we're here in uh, the Botanical Gardens car park. Um, we're probably gonna go head to South Hagley, do the majority of our session at South Hagley so we can continuously run in loops, um, which is not super exciting, but my coach has recommended me for this session to keep it consistently moving, so no, no time stopping to do anything. So, um, probably our best bet for today. All right, we're about 30, 35 minutes in, holding, what, 5.30-ish in a bit pace. Uh, 60 to go, and then we move into these threshold reps. The, uh, working sets now, onto the second one, four times six minutes, trying to hold basically marathon pace, feeling pretty good for the first one. I am absolutely spent, felt really good through the four by six and then just like after that you go into cool down mode. Good enough. So it's Sunday and on Sundays we go to Floor 12 Run Club, so I have a whole bunch of our merch that I'm taking. Got our hats. These are our tees, and then these are our racing singlets. So that's what we're doing this morning. Each week we get supplied drinks by 
Almighty, uh, and this week we've got their Pineapple Almighty Active, which is a caffeinated drink, basically like a healthy energy drink, no sugar, sparkling water and caffeine, so we've got about 10-15 minutes to do before Run Club this morning, and then we'll link up with the rest of the crew. Alright, so after yesterday's session, uh, my gym has like an ice bath and sauna, so I decided to come into town, do a session there, and honestly it made my recovery last night so much better like I found my my recovery store score on my Garmin watch sort of leveled out had a way better sleep than I probably normally would and uh, woke up this morning legs feel relatively fresh so definitely be doing that more as the block goes on I must say it is chilly though Got a bit of a sun shower going on. Thank you.